Hello everybody. Welcome to the Melody Voice Clinic and webinar on introduction to void disorders and role of the SLP. Treatment of patients with void disorders uh, requires a specialized voice clinics with a multidisciplinary team involving phonosurgeons, speech language pathologists, neurologists, and plastic surgeons. SLPs they play very important greater role, greater role in the management of patients with voice problems. Many speech language pathologists rarely come across various types of void disorder patients during their clinical training. Voice clinics can be established by ENT or by SLP. Speech language pathologists specialized in voice therapy techniques are called voice therapists and they are involved in the diagnosis, assessment, planning, and treatment of individuals with void disorders. Nowadays, need for voice therapist is increasing due to importance for communication skills in the society. To understand the role of SLPs in the treatment of void disorders, it is important to first understand one the physiology of voice production and uh, what are the causes of a void disorders, how the void disorders are diagnosed, signs, symptoms of void disorders, and voice therapy programs can be tailored to patient specific needs depending on these things. Now, if you, if you go to the physiological basis of voice production, there are four important steps in the voice production. One is generation of voice. This is produced by the voice power from the lungs. Two, by vibrators, that is the vocal cords. Three, is the resonators or articulators, which, where pulse vocal cords, pharyngeal walls, palate, tongue, lips, and jaws, they play the important role. And finally, the coordination of the CNS of brain is needed for function of all these things in a uniform way. Now, if you see here, this video shows how the air is pushed from the lungs towards the glottis from below and make the vocal cords to vibrate. And similarly, you find here in another video. You see here the movements of vocal folds. You can see here the movements of vocal folds, how they vibrate. Because they go laterally, go to open the glottis for respiration and then close medially to inflammation. And if you see in the patient by a stroboscopy, a digital laryngoscopy, you will find the vocal cords like this. In this way, you can see the vocal cords. How they are vibrating, just watch this video. Usually, the vocal folds vibrate at the rate of 300 times per second during speech, normal speech, and uh, about uh, uh, about 1000 times per second during the singing. That is the rate of speech by the vocal cords. Now, if you come to the causes for the void disorders, usually the void disorders are traditionally classified to two. One is functional and organic. Sometimes it is very difficult to demarcate the difference between the two things because functional may functional void disorders may lead to organic problem, 
And similarly, organic myoid problems are associated with functional disorders. Again, organic myoid disorders are further classified into congenital and acquired. Congenital myoid disorders means the myoid disorders which occur by birth. As you find in this picture, you can find the, the two vocal cords are fused by a membrane called laryngeal web. This is called laryngeal web. This is a congenital anomaly where the patients or the children are born with a voice problem. And coming to acquired voice disorders, we have got different varieties. One is the traumatic, the trauma, that is injury to the larynx, either external injury by, by way of accidents like that, or internal injury, that is internal injury means during surgery or during, during war shouting and rupture of the vessels in the vocal folds leading to blood collection or hematoma, that is internal injury can occur and that is the traumatic, they are known as the traumatic causes. Similarly, you have got inflammatory causes, that is inflammations may be due to the viral, bacterial or fungal infections. The most common is the viral infection, for example, is the common cold. So it is everybody's experience that during common cold, there will be some change in voice that is due to inflammatory reaction. And after that, you got neoplastic causes, neoplasms with tumors. The tumors may be innocent or benign tumors, or it may be a malignant or cancer tumors. You find here, one picture here, there is a growth on the vocal fold that is a malignant tumor. So these things will produce a lot of change in the voice. And finally, you got neurological causes, that is the Neurological causes means the causes which cause changes in the movements of the vocal folds. For example, is the vocal cord paralysis. This paralysis may be either unilateral, that is one side, or bilateral, that means both cords may be involved. Why did others are also known as dysphonias? There are mainly two types. One is the vibratory void disorders and resonant void disorders. Vibratory void disorders are also called phonatory void disorders. The commonest manifestation in these void disorders is the hoarseness. The other types of manifestation the patients may complain is the scratchy voice, weak voice, stiff voice, breathy voice, or painful voice that is known as the odonophonia, or last total loss of voice that is called as aphonia. The other variety, you know, the resonance disorders, which may present are hyper or hyper nasal voices. Example is the cleptopality. The other group of voice disorders manifestations will be due to pitch change. Pitch disorders, they are called pitch disorders. For example, female voice in males, that is known as the piperphonia. And similarly, a male voice in females called as androphonia. And most important thing is problems of the voice of the singers, that is singers voice problems, they have got special importance because singers form the most precious part of the professional voice users. But these changes, these complaints or voice manifestations are usually either loss of range during singing or the vocal fatigue during singing, that is usually they complain and every voice therapist or the phonosurgeon must have some knowledge about the, the terminology of the, the problems to know, understand the, the, the terminology of the singers, what they speak, must be able to understand in a proper position. So we must have knowledge of the singing and the techniques that is also very important for voice therapy or therapist. SLP is the key person in the evaluation <coughs> and assessment of voice with our patients. They, every voice therapist start the uh, evaluation of the patients in a voice clinics with a special questionnaire form for professional and non-professional voice users separately. This generally involves evaluating the vocal characteristics related to respiration, phonation, resonance, as well as the vocal range, the flexibility, so a comprehensive assessment to identify the void disorders includes one the case history. The case history of the patient, very important. So the voice therapist is the key person in noting down the important aspects of case history of the patient. They include medical status of the history of the patient, 
patient previous voice treatments were taking anything and the daily habits related to the vocal hygiene techniques and also the patient's description in his own words and the include the onset and symptoms of the his voice problem so a comprehensive assessment to identify the voice disorder includes one self assessment that is self assessment by the patient himself he will describe the ability to communicate his voice in the social working settings everyday activities and also his or emotional self image regarding the voice next the the therapist must take the necessary steps to have a detailed oral and peripheral examination of the patient in toto that is the structural motor based deficits that could affect the communication for example you see the movements of the tongue see the movements of the lip movements of the jaws that is this is very important the therapist should should examine all these touches of the patients similarly symmetry and movement of the face head neck and respiratory system also you should observe the therapist to concentrate on these things similarly you can also test the sensations of the face and the mouth taste and smell you can test similarly you can test the laryngeal sensations for example the tickling dryness and the burning patient have and all these things are important because these are important when you deal with patient with neurological disorders of the larynx apart from these things the slps also should concentrate in assessing the respiratory status of the patient that is examine the breathing pattern or respiratory pattern how the patient is taking breath and coordination of the respiration with the phonation whether he is taking properly taking breath and during the phonation or not taking our breath holding like that so these thing we should observe and then everybody knows this part that is called maximum phonation duration that is how many seconds if after taking a, a comfortable breath how many seconds the patient can able to make a sustained phonation with vowels is called as maximum phonation time because this is forms a very important aspect of the clinical examination of patients by the slps the next thing important thing is auditory and perceptual assessment this is also known as the rdt training auditory auditory training for the slps because a, a well trained slp or a voice therapist may have good auditory train ears that is to judge the quality of the voice like strain pitch loudness and overall sensitivity similarly you must be able to judge the resonance whether it is hyper or hyper resonant and phonation the the phonation and the rate of the speech also can be judged by auditory and perceptual assessment apart from these things we come into the other aspects of examination usually done by uh, ent surgeons or voice surgeons but when i went to united states i found these tests are also done by the voice therapists there i happened to meet stemple in the renowned world renowned voice therapist in uh, dayton so when i met him i i was surprised to see that they are doing stroboscopy and all the assessment in their voice clinic so and that's what i feel is the because the voice clinics can be run either by a ent surgeon or by a voice therapist so but because most of the voice therapist or speech therapist are not exposed to the uh, variety of voice cases though they may not be having all these um, ideas how to conduct a voice clinic on these things but nowadays there is now this is time and the purpose of this lecture is also to bring awareness among the speech therapist how they can conduct the voice clinic by themselves in their places by getting a proper training so the the common test that we do are called the digital laryngostroboscopy this test uh, is important because you know the vocal cords usually move at the rate of i told you 300 times per second during normal speech and 1000 times they vibrate during the singing so usually in a such a fast moving vocal cords it is not possible to detect 
the minute defects in the vocal folds by ordinary endoscopes. So we use one instrument called as digital laryngostroboscopy, where you can find the movements of the vocal cords are shown in a slow motion so that you can find the defects in the vocal force much better. Now okay, I will show you that now the digital video lingoscopy in this video. Just you can watch. Now you see the movements of the vocal folds here, how they are vibrating. And one side you find some a white thick mass on the vocal folds. And this is the a precancerous condition known as the lupoplakia. So when they move like this, like a waves in a ocean, it can detect the uh, defects in the vocal cords much better and much easier. So this is the digital laryngostroboscopy. If you do practice, mostly done by interdentists, but I found in abroad it is also practiced by the <coughs> voice therapist. The next test is called flexible dynamic laryngoscopy. Usually, usually we do stroboscopy with a digital endoscope passing through the mouth. So the patient cannot speak or sing. But when you do a flexible dynamic laryngoscopy, where a thin, small laryngoscope, flexible laryngoscope is passed through the nose and the vocal cords are examined. So at that time, you can easily see the movements of the vocal folds and the pattern of the movements of the vocal folds when the patient is either speaking or singing. So this is known as the dynamic phonation test or dynamic endoscopy. Now you see here in this video, So he has seen the different movements and different uh, patterns of vocal fall movements here, you can see that. And uh, this is the dynamic laryngoscopy. And similarly, you can also watch the movements of the vocal cords when the patient is singing, as you find here. <laughs> So these things they are important mostly for the voice therapist to assess the functional disorders of the or larynx or the vocal folds. So the, when the patients have a functional problems, these endoscopes will help us to detect uh, the any the functional disorder and the movement pattern of the vocal folds so that we can correct them by voice therapy. You know that most of the functional disorders of the or of the voice can be corrected by the voice therapy techniques only. The other test is, is the digital audio video record of the patients that is, the, that is also known as the per, perceptual voice analysis. The fourth one is called computer voice analysis. This is the this is objective test where you can assess the, the pitch, the frequency and by various tests like called jitter, shimmer and also the voice spectrograms. These things are useful not only for following the patients for their compliance but also for documentation and medical legal purposes. So these are the, this is one of the computer voice analysis. This is done by either WAGMI, which is available in our country, or by doctor speech, one of these things. And finally, sometimes when, you, when there is some surgical problems for the patients, we'll go for the other test called laryngeal, laryngeal electromyography, CT scan of the uh, uh, the course of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, that is nerve which is supplying the vocal cords from brain to the chest, MRI, and finally the pulmonary function test. These tests are also important because the the I told you the power from the voice comes from the lungs. So we had to assess the the lung capacity by pulmonary function test in all patients with voice disorders. <laughs> Now, what are the various treatment modalities we have got for the patients of voice disorders? One is the, for the important thing is, first thing is the counseling or educating the patient with the voice hygiene techniques. That is the job of the SLP or the voice therapist. Because the SLP is the most key, key person I told you in the management of voice clinics. Now, there are number of voice clinics are coming in the country, in our country also. And the first voice clinic in the country, our Melody Voice Clinic, which was established in Hyderabad in the year 2000, about 20 years before. 
now there are some more voice clinics which are coming out in different parts of the country so there will be a lot of demand for this voice therapist so there is need for the SLPs to come forward and show interest to learn the voice therapy techniques so i told you one so the treatment modality first the treatment modality the counseling and educate the patient regarding the voice hygiene techniques and they how they are going one and got the voice problem and second thing is voice therapy by well trained voice therapist so oh, because because I, I told you, you in many places during their training unfortunately the speech language pathologists are not exposed to voice therapy techniques because there are no there I, we believe that many places not only in india it is entire world there is deficit in the voice uh, therapist because um, uh, most of the people are concentrating on the audiology and speech and few people are showing interest in the voice but now i do tell you they, they there is a lot of demand for these things so with the slp should come forward to learn and practice the voice therapy next thing is behavioral therapy by psychologist this is also very important because most of the patients with voice disorders or have some some or other psychological problems so this should be done by a psychologist and regarding to the role of ent surgeons or phono surgeons so called we got there are several techniques that are done for voice problems one is known as the laryngeal injection techniques and uh, other one is called phono surgery or voice surgery but here also there is a lot of necessity for voice therapy in the pre and post operative phases of the phono surgery so there is no phono surgery without voice therapy so there is no voice clinic without a voice therapist or speech learning all the pathologist so the the today the present day the idea of our talk is to bring awareness for the slps and to encourage them to start the uh join in the voice therapy uh, practicing and also voice therapy techniques now i show you some of the come out some of this uh, uh common voice disorders one is the everybody know this is the pyrophonia i regret because there may be some buffering in the video but audio will be clear just you watch these patients and their results of the treatment also can watch now let us see this patient with pyrophonia my name is ravi kumar i am studying first year of mba in usman university i have come here for treatment of my voice i have this voice problem since i am from hyderabad i am doing my mba from usman university i am getting very good voice after treatment from dr panindra kumar so he has seen the patient you know everybody knows that about pyrophonia and the results are very gratifying and 99% or 98% of pyrophonias can be corrected by voice therapy only 1 to 2% requires surgery called as laryngeal framework surgery or thyroplastic type 3 where the patient may not responding to voice therapy we will do surgery and correct them and that also gives instantaneous improvement for the of the a uh, patient and now this is the patient which shows the uh, voice before surgery and after surgery this is called phonomicro surgery where the patient this patient has got like a hoarse husky and a male type of voice which has been corrected by uh, surgery and voice therapy. i work in arvind international school i am a teacher as a teacher um, i am suffering some throat uh, change of voice and uh, throat My name is Bala Annapurna. I am getting very good voice after phono micro surgery. I am very happy with my, my voice. My name is Ravi Kumar. I am studying first year of MBA in Usman. My name is Bala Annapurna. This last patient is also had a hoarse and rough voice. Lee, I have completed my electronics. I am suffering from change of voice for last three years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
January 5. I am John Wesley. I have completed postgraduate in electronics. I am suffering from ch change of voice for last three years. After voice surgery, voice is some better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here you can see that the results of these patients are not totally by surgery. They are by combined effort of surgery and voice therapy. So you can understand how it is important for the voice therapist to do a lot of justice for these patients with voice disorders. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.